Howdy all of you delicious people, I'm here today to review South of Heaven. The very first thing that immediately came to mind when I was going into this movie is really just the cast list. I was like, hmm, like, okay, I can like this, mm, okay, I can like that. Uh, like, I really wanted to see something unique really coming from the lead actor, which is to be Jason Sudeikis. Like, I was kind of hoping that I would at least get some kind of difference than him just being him for the 85th time. Uh, it's like, we never have a Jason Sudeikis thing where it's like, man, like, he was a chameleon. Like, you uh, didn't even notice he was in the film until he, like... We're never going to have Jason Sudeikis have any kind of, like, Jared Leto kind of thing where we're going to be like, oh my god, was that Jason Sudeikis the whole time? I didn't even realize it. No. Like, you're going to have really uh, Jason who's just giving you the same guy that he's played for years now. <laughs> Man, if we could go on and have him be, like a couple villains in a movie or have him just uh, go and like a simple hairstyle would probably drastically change this guy. Also, like how many movies has he had the exact same hair through every single one of these films? Like, man, if he actually grew his hair out or had this long stretch of a thing, you would never know this guy was the same guy because um, he's had the exact same hairstyle through every single one of his movies. So, going into this film, uh, besides that, uh, like, I just feel like this is a slow-to-the-crawl kind of a film. Um, there is some interesting things out of it, interesting things out of it, but it's the slow slog of a thing to get there. Um, really, I can go on and tee it up of what this movie is about, kind of give, a, give my grading system and then go on and tell you where you can go on and see this movie. Because currently, right now, you can see it on AMC Plus right now. If you are to have never have gone into an AMC Plus subscription, you can go on and be able to see this movie and a number of things right now, currently in the seconds recording, for a week free. So if there's any number of things, any number of movies that you can go on and see on AMC app, our AMC Plus's app, uh, go ahead and check out uh, any of the things that I have had on this channel because I'm sure at some point in time I have gone on and done a number of other uh, AMC Plus uh, stuff. Uh, where else could you go out of your way to say that you've seen this movie? Well, there's also uh, some convenient apps that I've used over several months that you can reliably use. You can go on and Google search these apps called Letter C Movies and go on and be able to search for that app and be able to download that app and be able to watch South of Heaven. You can also go on, so it's a, a letter and then a word and then app. So you can also go and uh, search on Google search for Fox HD Movies, uh, which of course is a uh, app where the logo will say that, but the title will say something different. It will say Play 1080p HD Movies. Uh, you can also uh, Google Play Store an app called TV Crush. I've been using that also fairly conveniently, uh, which you may not be able to see South of Heaven on, but you'll probably be able to see any number of other things. But with that said, uh, how do I feel about this movie? What is the grading of this film? I would have to say that this movie is okay. Uh, really, it gets to the point of me, and it's just a slow build of a film. And, like, I don't feel like the action is to pick this film up either. <laughs> so, what is this movie about, for those of you who are interested? So... We go on and we have uh, Jimmy Ray, who is Jason Sudeikis, to be on parole. And so he's desperately pleading to these people that he is to have a, uh, a, uh, a woman of his that is to get a 
diagnosis of cancer and that she only has supposedly and Jimmy's to go on and try to beg these people to let him out and of course they do for him to go on and try to do the right thing because there's only so much time he has left with Annie who is his woman in this movie and we have them really quickly trying to get focused on them getting married but also we have Annie who's also uh really thinking about like well like we're basically gonna have to like quickly pick our wedding song but then also our death like my death song because she's going to pass away sadly there's nothing they can do so in this story we of course have it where Jimmy is to be forced one way or another to go back in the dirty business of what could almost get him in jail because there's nothing he can do. He's basically like uh, in a rock and a hard place with this story. And the further on we go on to this, the more and more that we're having Jimmy's character that is consistently digging himself into a hole metaphorically speaking to where we have of course jimmy that is just desperately clinging on to the the months that he has left with his wife and his own life at risk consistently with all the stuff he is to basically uh by happenstance of life and whatever uh be forced to do so, with that said, let's just go into that double five time territory. Uh, like, overall, I would just say that this movie, if you, uh, I would say if you have some time to kill, this feels like a decent movie. I would call this movie a nice film. Um, like, there's something just nice and tender about it, especially when we have it where Jimmy is just so much wanting to be with Annie uh, for her last days and like the weird thing of it is is we have both Jimmy and Annie who has had some time away but when Jimmy comes to Annie it feels like they're a brand new couple because we of course have Jimmy going on and asking Annie like well like can I kind of kiss you in the first scene like supposedly that they have together it seems kind of weird and then they go on and then like later on, like we have it to where uh, it seems more genuine. It doesn't seem as like, oh, I guess like let's uh, like, I guess we should go on and, and kiss here. Um, but it's it's nice. I like this movie because it's nice, um, but I still can't go on and justify it's anything but like. Hey, if you got some time to kill, <laughs> South of Heaven, uh, if you can conveniently go on and watch this movie for free, then by golly, go ahead and do so. Uh, I wouldn't tell anybody to go out of their way to see this film. This film is just a middle-of-the-road okay film, um, but it's a very soft okay, uh, just because like there's some nice things in it, but it's also just a schlog to get through. Uh, so that's all that I'd have to say about South of Heaven. Let's go into that double five, because it's just that time yet again to go into spoiler time. Spoiler time, it's about that time again to spoil this movie. In all honesty, I get that this movie is the length that it actually is, but I don't think that there's really enough events in this movie that go on and have me, like, need to take a lot of time to describe this film just because it's a very like it's a very slow to the draw kind of film uh so we have jimmy who like i said was to go on and try to get paroled from out of prison uh i'm not gonna have exact like oh he came out of this prison and he uh went to this area and and very specific odd like things uh within this one because it just doesn't justify taking that kind of sifting of time so 
we go and have Jimmy who gets released after he's to go on and tell this story to these uh, to these people because Jimmy is to go on and say it's like hey I just want to tell you guys this story I've gone on and told like all these guards this story I've gone and and told this uh, preacher this story I've gone on and just rehearsed this over and over and over in my head and so like well okay what's the story and Jimmy is mentioning that he wants to go on and marry Annie before, of course, she is to pass away. That's all he's ever really wanted to do is marry this woman. And he may not get the chance. And that's why he wants to be out of prison, paroled, and whatever. And he realizes that uh, there was a crime, of course, of what he had done. But, like, he just desperately wants to... Uh, just go back to the life with his wife and never do a bad thing again. Going on and having him uh, just kind of mention that his wife only has a year to live. And we also have it to where these people on this parole board are saying, it's like, well, hey, like, why did you go on and wait so long to want to marry this woman? And Jimmy goes on and says, well, like, I just... Like, me and my wife feel very uncomfortable to have to go and get married into a prison that when really, when it comes down to it, it's a very, like, you can't have a wedding that a woman would want to have in a church like this. It just, like, we just can't have it. Like, we, of course, have it to where Annie wants to have this big, lavish wedding and bells and whistles, and you can't do that while in prison. You just can't. So, Jimmy gets released, and so, of course, Annie is to meet Jimmy there. And so, interesting enough, we find out later on in the film that the only reason why Jimmy was to have gone to prison was simply because of Annie's family her brother and her father was to go on and force Jimmy into doing this whole bank robbery thing. So, cause we have Annie confessing that to, uh, to Whit Price later on in the film. So we have Jimmy and Annie going on and, and just living their life. And we of course have Jimmy who goes to this parole board or, Proly, or parole officer, which is to be Schmidt, and we have it to where Jimmy is talking to this guy, and it seems like Jimmy is kind of making some jokes with this guy, and so on and so forth, and Schmidt's like, yeah, like, you know the thing about people that like to make jokes? Like, I just feel like they're wasting my time, and if you want to waste my time, like, uh, then you can go and get cuffed and go right back into prison. And so Jimmy's like, okay. <laughs> like, so we go on and we have Jimmy who is to meet up with Annie uh, after he's to meet his parole board or, or his parole officer. And his parole officer is to give him a job uh, doing some, uh, kind of, uh, uh, I want to say it's kind of like a warehouse job. It looks like, uh, they go on and they're, of course, doing something, I'm assuming, with, uh, with wood pallets and forklifts and, uh, all this stuff, something that I've kind of heavenly been, uh, used to seeing stuff, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, I never went on and got a fork lift license because why would I want that kind of responsibility and plus it's just like like they never really paid me enough to have that kind of responsibility of a vehicle that you have to drive it a specific way and whatever but I get it uh like a lot of guys probably get a lot more money if they drive these forklifts around uh but it is what it is with certain jobs so We go on and we have Jimmy who's trying to do this, this kind of normal job and 
try and just uh, rekindle the love wish that he is to have with Annie. Uh, rekindle romances and uh, go into, of course, them uh, sleeping together, let's just say. And doing all the things, going back into the throes of uh, passion, let's just say. Uh, to refine love again after the time that, uh, of course, Jimmy has been gone. So we go on and have at one point where Jimmy is going bowling with Annie. And we have it, of course, where like Smith is just saying like, hey, uh, like don't even try to like uh, get overly drunk or whatever. Like uh, we're going to be like uh, freaking like watching you like a hawk. So don't regret uh, this decision here. But we go on and we have this Smith guy who just gets more and more, like, like, he is completely taking 100% control of this situation. So, Schmidt goes on and is to see Jimmy in this bowling alley. So, Schmidt is like, hey, can I have a moment alone with Jimmy? And Annie's like, okay. So... Schmidt goes on with Jimmy and is kind of playing this, uh, this little uh this little game with this little doll and so we go on and have the two of them talking and so schmidt is going and telling jimmy that he needs to go and pick something up secretly uh for schmidt and jimmy's like well what if i say no what if i say no I'm not going to do that. And Schmidt's like, well, then I'll have, I'll come up with some way for you to breach parole. So we'll have Schmidt who goes on to Jimmy's locker and is to say that there's drugs in it. Uh, he's like basically telling him he's going to plant something on Jimmy to make him look bad. So do this or you're going to regret it. So we have Schmidt who's going on and uh, like taking a couple days for Jimmy to marinate on this. And so Jimmy doesn't want to do it. And so that's when Schmidt is at Jimmy's work and wanting to plant this things of this thing of drugs on Jimmy because Schmidt is to realize how Jimmy sees time out is a valuable thing with Annie. And so Schmidt will get what he wants. So Jimmy's like, okay, I will go to whoever you want to have me pick up these drugs. So we have Jimmy who goes on, and it's to meet with a guy named Manny, who is to have a bunch of his men there. Uh, one guy is to be holding this saw, and what is it, a sawzall? Hey guys, this is a sawzall. Why? Because it saws all. <laughs> God, that stupid thing. Uh, like, funny enough, the saw that that guy was using, uh, like, I have had to forcibly use a saw like that, uh, I think, to kind of cut up a certain kind of, uh, like, tractor crates. I would have to, like, cut those up. Like, if anybody knows a, a lawn tractor, like, uh, they have these big, massive crates. You have to kind of use that big, massive saw to cut through all of those and we had a tour we had a plugged in one where they have like a, a portable battery charge thing because they're a freaking film and like really for this like they could go on and just and buy that kind of thing um because <laughs> like hey man we're just gonna use this for like 30 seconds and then we're out so but who knows with movies, probably they had to like, would it be crazy if they had to use that multiple takes and multiple times and freaking they had like multiple batteries that they had to buy just for this scene? Because that could happen. Like we could have a number of takes that had to be taken and they have a sh E amount of batteries for this thing. That would be, f that would be sad. So we go on and we of course have it to where Manny is telling Jimmy 
that they, of course, have a specific plastic rug because they were to think that Schmidt was to come in here and that they were probably going to uh, make an example out of him. And so instead, they're just like, well, hey, how about we just make an example of Jimmy? How about we just go on and chop this guy's hand off to just make an example of him? And Jimmy's like, no, you're not. So Jimmy's going on and almost having a saw on one of these guys. And so they're like, whoa, 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 okay. Like, here, here's the package. Here's the vanilla envelope. And you go on and bring this package uh, to, I'm assuming, Schmidt. Because I don't remember them saying who it goes to because it doesn't really matter anyways. So, we have Jimmy going on and driving off into the night, all of a sudden getting into a car accident with this motorcycle, and this motorcycle, of course, is to go down, and this guy is to die instantly. While, so... We have Jimmy who is to meet with a friend of his called Honest Frank. And it seems that Honest Frank might have at some point been a previous uh, criminal. And so Frank wants Jimmy to work with him. And Jimmy's just like, no, man. Like, I don't want to be seen with anything that's going to tempt me to get back into the like some kind of old life. And so Frank is just like, okay, all right. Like, okay, just keep my card. And because uh, we accidentally have Honest Frank who springs onto Jimmy and Jimmy like bashes him in the face, breaking his nose. And Jimmy's like, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> so We go on and we have Jimmy that is to make it back to Frank and is to tell him to get rid of this body because he knows that he can do stuff like that. And Honest Frank's like, man, you just bring this to my doorstep and you just think that I'm just going to do this for you? And Jimmy's like, come on. He's like, okay. So they go on and they get rid of this body. And so they think everything is now fine. And so Jimmy was, I guess, too still supposed to deliver this hefty amount of money. And he doesn't. He just doesn't. So all of a sudden we have the very next day. We, of course, have a guy named Whit Price, who is to be Mike Colton, who, of course, a lot of people probably know him from either the show Evil or probably Luke Cage from the Netflix series. Um... Or, like, if anybody has seen uh, Million Dollar Baby, he's also in that movie. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that, that was some cool interactions between him and Clint Eastwood. And I was like, man, like, I wish this guy could have been in the movie a little bit longer. But, oh, well, I guess it is what it is with that story. So, it, it makes sense that the guy, that, that that guy wasn't in the whole entire movie. Like, it pushes... Clint Eastwood's character to have to go with, uh, of course, Hillary Swank's character. So, but anyways, pushing on, I'm taking too much time talking about that. So, we go on and we have it where Whit Price is going to Honest Frank's business and is now torturing him with a nail gun. I'm like, what kind of business does this guy run? <laughs> like, I can't make heads or tails of what Honest Frank actually does anyways. Uh, it does look like a junkyard, but then again, I, I can't really tell uh, 100%. So, if anybody can easily tell me what exactly Honest Frank exactly does. Uh, but anyways, so, we have it where Wit Price is to be this guy who is to... Uh, put trackers or tracers on everything. Every vehicle to have this kind of uh, car insurance policy being put on everything. So we have Wit Price that goes on and is to uh, now question Honest Frank and say it's like, hey, 
where's my courier? Where's my package? Uh, and so where is it? Because it seems like you have the parts from this guy's motorcycle. So where is he? And Frank is like, oh my god, this guy took this package because the package was five hundred thousand dollars. So the guy was like, oh, sh like this guy really like took this and ran away with it. So I'm like, wait a minute. So why is there two different things? Why is there two different packages? Like, does anything, like, I guess we have it to where, uh, like, I am so confused by that whole handoff of things. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out the math in my head. Maybe going on that... Maybe that whole deal with Manny got me confused. Because I don't think Schmidt handed anything off to Jimmy. I don't know. It is what it is with this story. So. We go on and we of course have it where. Frank of course is to tell uh, Whit Price where Jimmy is to hang his hat. So, his home address. So now we go on and we of course have, uh, we of course have it where Whit Price is making it to Annie's home. And before we have Whit Price coming into this house, we have Schmidt coming into this house and he's basically saying that he needs to perform a search of this home because it's a parole officer thing. Going on and starting to just cut into this cake that isn't really his because it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to get this cake right. Like, So we all of a sudden have Whit Price that comes to this building and Schmidt is to know who Whit Price is. And so we have Schmidt who's going on and looking at Annie and saying like, hey, Whit Price is a criminal. And if your husband is working with a criminal, like this is a parole violation and like he's going to go right back to jail. So we go on and we just have Whit Price who is to tell this guy to like, hey, you know what? How about you just get out of here? Why don't you just leave? Like, so... We go on to have Whit Price, who is to just cut into Schmidt and bury him into this cake uh, as he falls over and dies. So, we have it where, of course, Jimmy is to eventually go on and make his way home to... Uh, deal with with price and like yeah I don't know what you're talking about uh, like I've like I have n I have no package I don't understand what you mean yada 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 so but they go on and they go into this uh, this uh, grassy area and bury this body so they must know something about it. So Jimmy is to consistently play naive. And so now Price is going and taking Annie until Jimmy is to come up with the money. The 500000 It's like, hey man, you better come up with this money fast. So we go on and we turn around and have Jimmy, who of course is going and stealing... Uh, Whit Price's son, Tommy Price, and is going and holding him hostage, and 
we of course now have it where uh where tommy's calling his father and we of course have uh jimmy here who's calling or taking the phone from tommy like yeah like how much is your son worth to you because <laughs> like you want to take my wife i'm going to take your son how much is this going to be worth let's exchange here buddy so while jimmy of course is to go and take tommy we have jimmy taking this kid to this trailer off in some seclusion somewhere all of a sudden this kid is to like fake the fact that he is to be uh having an allergy to some peanuts and so he goes and is to ask for his uh this certain needle to his to eventually be able to cure himself of this his EpiPen. And so Jimmy's running off thinking like, oh my god, this guy this kid isn't faking. And so we have this kid run off and he gets run over by this car. And so Jimmy is checking on this kid to see if he's okay. And he's like, yeah, I'm okay, but I'm like, it freaking hurts. So, luckily we have Jimmy who trades in Tommy. Yes, damaged goods, but turns him in nonetheless. And so, Wit is going on and talking to Annie. And we have it to where... We find out that I guess Whit Price's wife had died. And Annie's like, well, hey, I'm dying too. Because I guess uh, both Annie and Price's wife uh, was to have curly hair. And Annie's like, yeah, like, uh, we're a dying breed, <laughs> literally. So, the more and more that Whit and Annie are kind of exchanging here... The more Wit is like, you know what, like, whatever is to happen in here, I can't just let this couple, like, I can't kill off Jimmy and let Annie die by herself all alone. And, like, I can't go on and kill Annie like, sooner than she's actually going to get killed, because that just seems awful. So, once Jimmy does deliver uh, Price's son back to him, Price is like, okay. Because they go and they meet at some public place. Price goes on and says, like, I was think like, this feels like the end of the movie Drive to me. If you've ever seen the end of the Ryan Gosling film... Where we have uh, uh, Ryan Gosling meet up with the one villainous guy because they, they're the only two pieces left on the chessboard. And we, of course, had this guy telling Ryan, hey, you're going to be running for the rest of your life. Every time you're going to go over and look at your shoulder thinking it's me and it may be. But the girl will be safe. <laughs> like, it feels like that moment here where we have that kind of dialogue that's going to be said here. Uh, but, like, no. So, Wit is to say, like, hey, what we're going to do here is have both of you, both Jimmy and Annie, you guys are going to uh, live together in bliss. Be happy for the rest of the life uh, that you, Jimmy, are to have with Annie. But the day of which that Annie is to die, you're going to come back to me, Jimmy. And then I'm going to kill you. Fair enough. And they're like, okay, fair enough. So, we of course have Jimmy going with Annie and saying like, hey, Let's go to, to Mexico. Let's leave. Let's leave the country. And he's like, huh? What do you mean? And he's like, you know what? I have $500,000 that I stole from these people. 
let's run off to Mexico <laughs> to get married. And he's like, oh my God, yeah, sure, let's let's go. Jimmy, of course, is it go on and take this car that was to be uh, having a tracer on it because Price is to immediately think that Jimmy is going to do something shady and try to run out, which he really does. So we have Price that is reaming up with his son, and his son is saying that he was hit by some car. And so Price doesn't think anything of it. The very next day, we have Price going on and uh, trying to get his son to wake up. And we find him in a bloody mess in his bed. And so we, of course, have Wit, who's running to the hospital. We find out that his son is to have, like, internal bleeding because of uh, this uh, car accident uh, that, I, that I guess he had said he had been in. And Price is like, oh my god. So, like, this guy is possibly going to have taken my son from me. I'm going to go on and try to uh, get back at him. So we have Price going on and sending one of his men uh, with uh, Joey uh, to, to go after this guy. To use this tracer to find out where this guy is. So we go on and we have these guys going on and trying to get to Jimmy. And Jimmy seem, sees them at some gas station somewhere. And he's like, oh my god. He calls his wife. He's like, you gotta get out of there. Get this gun. And uh, so... We have Annie who has to go on and do a shootout and kill some of these guys. And we have Jimmy who takes his gun and kills the other guy. And so Jimmy's like, well, hey, this isn't going to stop. I'm going to have to go on and finish this. You would have thought Jimmy and Annie would have just ran off. Because there is no guarantee that Jimmy's going to make it out of this alive. Like, plus he's going to go into a situation where he's heavily outgunned. But, like, we have it to our guests, uh, him possibly thinking it of, at the end of all this, is that Annie will probably be safe. So, because they were going to shoot Annie, and then shoot, and then go after Jimmy. Because Wit was wanting that, to just have Annie be killed, like, quickly. So that way... Jimmy could just be like, oh, my God, like, you took the one thing from me. So, Jimmy is to go into Wit's house, going through and uh, shotgunning a lot of these guys. And so he goes on and gets shot in the shoulder and then gets shot in the, the chest at some point while fighting off Wit. And so all of a sudden, Jimmy is to realize what is the reason why... Uh, we, of course, have it that Wit had gone after Jimmy's because of this kid. He's like, oh, sh like, so we go on and we have, uh, we have Wit shooting Jimmy and then Jimmy shoots up Wit to kill him. And then at this point, we just have Jimmy just racing against time just to get back to Annie. He's not doctoring up any of his wounds because he's probably thinking he's going to bleed out anyways or he's going to die. So we have Jimmy just racing his way back to Annie and supposedly the happy ending we were to get here was that Jimmy was able to somehow make it to Annie and she is to hug on to uh, Jimmy as if she's not hurt and she kisses him, and everything's great. That, I guess, is to be the happy ending that we could have possibly gotten. But the real ending is that we go on and we have Jimmy, who, I guess, eventually just bleeds out, and is to die somewhere in the middle of this water, and he never makes it back to Annie. And that's how the movie just ends. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> They should have just run off together. Like, how much time were they really going to have? But at least they got married. That was the nice thing. That was the nice thing at the end of all this. 
Uh, so speaking at the end of all this, like, I think I'm just going to get out of here. Uh, I probably didn't go into much details and, and all this uh, rigmarole or whatever. Um, simply because, like, uh, really I just wanted to get the bullet point stuff out. Like, there wasn't any real story to just kind of, like, uh, come out of this, really. There wasn't any stretch of dialogue, any real legitimate story that I felt that I needed to go and, and repeat or whatever here. Uh, because there just wasn't anything like that. Um, but yeah, so that's it for South of Heaven. Go ahead and check that out, uh, or if you've already checked it out, after hearing what I've had to say, and you can go out of your way to be like, oh yeah, I hated this movie, uh, I don't know why I watched it, uh, blah blah. There, there's those people, they have wildly different opinions about this film. Um, some people could have liked this film, uh, people could have a variety of different opinions. People could be like, oh man, you should grade this movie way higher or way lower. Uh, this movie sucked, whatever. Like, there's a lot of people that can conveniently watch a film some way or another. And they would go on and have their own opinion, which is perfectly fine because I will have my own opinion too. Um, and nobody has the wrong answer here. Uh, so... With that said, I think I'm going to get out of here uh, to go on and review uh, possibly uh, more episodes of All of Us Are Dead. <laughs> and probably, uh, I'm probably going to have to review that uh, Boba Fett episode. Uh, so I'll have to be doing that. Because uh, it really just kind of, like, it really just kind of sucks. But I, I get it. Uh, why would you want to hear a Star Wars review anyways? <laughs> Especially a way of which that I would deliver it. But, like, those Disney Plus shows are just, like, no one really cares about the reviews. Uh, plus also, like, the way of which that I do those anyways. Like, it just, it doesn't really matter. So with that said, I'm going to get out of here. Bye, buddy. Bye, buddy.